Hi guys, so I wanted to show you this video of Donald Trump responding to a journalist asking a question about where he gets his information from and how much impact and influence Fox News has in his decision making. How much influence does Fox News have over your thinking on the pandemic? I'm no different than anybody else. I mean, I watch Fox News and I watch others and I read a lot of newspapers and... <laughs> Yes, I, I truly believe that you read a lot of newspapers. Um, okay, he doesn't read any newspapers. But this int this is interesting about Fox News. Fox, Fox News is basically a mouthpiece for the Trump administration. They're, they're a mouthpiece for the Republican Party in general. They always promote the Republican candidate over the Democrat. They always promote the Republican Party as... Uh, the party that cares about ordinary people, when in reality doesn't give a crap about ordinary people. And they uh, always promote Donald Trump. And because Trump is a narcissist, he switches on to Fox News because they stroke his ego. The best way to deal with a narcissist, if you want them to do what you want, uh, is to flatter them. And they continually do that. And he always listens to them because they always flatter him. It's a vicious cycle. He flatters Fox News. Fox News flatters him. And it continues back and forth in that way. And of course, he will always listen to Fox News. So they're able to, in a way, influence po policy because he listens constantly to them. He doesn't read any newspapers. Of course, he doesn't. Only a fool would think that Donald Trump actually reads newspapers. The closest thing to reading something more than a few lines is in a report. If he has to read a report, it's been said that they had to put his name in large font inside the report. Otherwise, he wouldn't bother to read it. He's disinterested in any issue that doesn't involve Donald Trump. It can be any issue you want. This pandemic, it can be uh, the Russia crisis, um, it can be the situation with China, North Korea, Europe, whatever. If his name isn't involved in the re included in the report, then he's not going to bother to read it. And I get a lot of information from my people. I think I'm very well versed when it comes to uh, not only the pandemic, but everything. <laughs> So the thing is, he's not lying because he he's trying to trick people. He's lying because he act, or he actually believes this. He's such a narcissist that he believes that he knows he's well versed on everything. So if let me just ask a few questions here. So if you're well versed on the pandemic, well, when you said it was a hoax, were you misinformed because the people who versed you or trained you up or taught you what to say about the pandemic was it them that were misinformed when they said it was a hoax we know it's not a hoax or when you said that it would you said it would disappear um it would go away like a miracle was that you being misinformed or was it the fault of the experts so the experts who gave you wrong advice so you were reversed, but the ver the information was wrong. <laughs> and this, uh, when you're saying we're going to, it's going to go down to zero, the deaths will go down to zero, or the cases, I don't remember which it was, cases or deaths will go down to zero in a very short time, that we'd reopen at Easter. So who was wrong here? Because obviously the information that you broadcasted to the public was wrong. So is it your fault that it's wrong, or is it the, the people who are versing you in this information that were wrong? I mean, I'm, I, I enjoy that, and I think I have an obligation to do it. So, uh, but there's certainly a more honorable source than some. I mean, some is, some is uh, fake. If you look at CNN, it's fake news. If you he doesn't, he, I think it was Donald Trump that invented this, uh, this concept of fake news. It's him that invented this idea of fake news. So, but he, he doesn't actually understand the meaning of fake news himself. He coined the phrase, as far as I know, 
but he doesn't understand how to use it. You don't say if CNN is fake news. Some articles you can criticize. You can say the article is fake news or the information in that article is fake. So the news is fake. But you can't say CNN is fake news because if CNN came out and said Donald Trump is the president, well, is that fake news? No, you can criticize the articles or some of the articles that they publish on their website or they broadcast on TV. And you can say that news is fake you have to have evidence to support that. But you can't just say CNN is fake. Because if CNN said you are the president of the United States, is that fake? If you look at MSDNC, uh, I call it MSDNC. You know what that means, right? Democratic National Committee. <sighs> He's like a pedantic eight-year-old, five-year-old even. Huh? <laughs> DNC. I didn't say MSNBC. I said MSN DNC, MSND, or whatever, whatever the hell he said. He's like using this childish language. I'm going to change around the words like the lamestream media instead of the mainstream media, uh -huh. because that's that wins. That's cool for his supporters. His supporters don't have any intellectual ability to critically look at something. So they just use a, a childish slogan as a as a way of attacking the integrity or the integrity of some media outlet. Why don't you criticize what they actually have said? You said they have said this and this is wrong because of this. But he doesn't say that. He just criticizes the name. You look at NBC, NBC to me is very dishonest news, and that's why they fired Andy Lack, I guess. You have to ask them, but Andy Lack was a hack. Oh my God, Lan, Andy Lack was a hack. So you're criticizing them for firing this guy, and then you said that he was a hack. So then you should be happy that they fired him if he was a hack. But this idea... Andy Lack is a hack. Who does this work on? Is there someone clapping in their home? Yeah, that's such a cool thing to say. I'm glad my president is able to think up of, of, of words that rhyme. <laughs> and they fired him. And they did a big favor to the world and to this country. I thought you said you criticized them before. Now you're saying that they did a good job. He doesn't... His sentence starts off in one direction and finishes contradicting the first part of the, the original sentence. But no, I find NBC to be very dishonest. I find, uh, which is a Comcast. So it's just, hold on, I need to go back for a moment. And they did a big favor to the world and to Andy Lack, I guess. Uh, I call it MSDNC, you know what that means, right? Democratic National Committee. Uh, you look at NBC, NBC to me is very dishonest news, and that's why they fired Andy Lack, I guess. So they're dishonest. You have to ask them, but Andy Lack was a hack, and they fired him, and they did a big favor to the world and to this. Okay, I'm confused. So you said that they were dishonest, then they fired this guy, I don't know who this guy is, Andy Lack, and you said they did a good thing. This country. But no, I find NBC to be very dishonest. I find, uh, which is a Comcast division. I call it Concast with, a, with an N. I don't use the M. I always call it Concast. Okay. Uh, ABC, I thought he gave me a very fair interview the other night. Very good professional. I've had very good relationships with him, as you know. Sorry, Mr. ABC. <laughs> I don't know who he's talking. He said, I had an interview with ABC. And he's very good. I thought ABC was a network, not a guy. Uh, CBS is having a hard time, but they're not getting it straight. In fact, last night I read where they did a false report where they actually... You, you can understand when Donald Trump is inventing something. Because he starts doing this thing with his hands. It's like he's playing a, a, an accordion. 
this is when you know he's inventing something. So when he when he says when he has something set in his mind, so CNN is fake news, uh, MSNBC is dishonest, whatever. Then when he has to invent something, his hands start moving. I've noticed this a lot. You got people to make it look like it was a turn. Did you see what happened? They got people. Let's get some people because they want to make it look like it was turmoil. Let's get some people. What are you talking about? What people? What people did what? And they do that with this White House all the time. They, they, love, they love the word chaos when there's no chaos whatsoever. They love the word chaos. But uh, what happened at CBS yesterday was terrible, where they got a lot of people to try, <laughs> try and pretend like it was a mass amount of chaos and disorder. You saw that. It was terrible. But of course there's chaos in your in your administration. Your, your administration changes people faster than a call center. You have, you had a press sec secretary changed, I don't know how many times. You had the secretary of state changed how many times, I don't know. Um, like at, at, what at what stage does this not appear chaotic? At what stage is it stable? Is it stable from one day to the next, perhaps? But over the over the last th uh, almost four years, it's been complete and utter chaotic. Uh, a complete and utter chaotic uh, administration. It's insane. Led by someone who is an insane narcissist. But I just wanted to show you this because it's just another example of how weird Donald Trump is and how out of touch he is with reality. And I think it's telling how he starts doing these um, hand gestures when he's inventing something. You know, when something isn't set in his mind, as I said before, when he has to invent something, he starts moving his hands around like he's playing an accordion or something like that. Let me know in the comments, guys. As always, your comments are much appreciated. Um, but I really hope that this situation is going to change, that Donald Trump is not elected again in, in November. Um, this current crisis would sink a normal president. But of course, Donald Trump is not a normal president.